Assalamu alaikum. This is Megan White answering your question here at About Islam. So you've been divorced after you were married for six years. You have two kids. The one thing that's not clear to me in your question is whether or not you and your wife can get back together or not. But I understand that one of the, the driving forces behind the divorce was the fact that, as you've described it, that your wife hated sex. And it was something that you felt like you couldn't cope with because you waited, you know, like anyone else until they got married in order to be intimate with someone. And then you found out that she's not interested in sex. I don't know if it's too late for you guys to have a second chance or not, but here's what I want to tell you if you decide to get remarried in the future to someone else. When somebody says that they hate sex, what that's really telling you is that there definitely is a problem of some kind. What that problem is, I don't know. And over 10 years of working with others, there are so many different things from both men and women that can impact their interest in intimacy. For some people, they went through some kind of sexual trauma in their life. They were molested as a child. They were raped as a child. They were abused as a child. And so as a result of things like that, they don't want anything to do with sex because it reminds them of the trauma that they went through. For other people, they have their own psychological other issues that impact their ability to enjoy sex. And so as a result, they push it away. They don't like to be vulnerable. They don't like to be intimate. They don't like the feeling of being out of control, which at times for some people, intimacy can feel like if they don't know how to articulate their needs, their wants, and be present in the process. It is a very challenging situation for sure for a couple. And perhaps neither she nor you knew how to address this challenge. Because when you have a wife, for example, who's consistently saying, no, 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 I'm not interested, I don't want it, I hate this, you know, she doesn't want anything to do with it, of course it's gonna be frustrating for you, of course that's not gonna be fair to you. And at the same time, the only way to improve the situation is by being educated, by being able to have open conversations about what's really going on, and for her to understand that sex is something that could be beneficial for her too, that it wasn't just about you, that it's not just about men. A lot of women don't have good education around this topic, and so a lot of them don't understand what's in it for them. You know, were you as her husband able to satisfy her sexually? Did you understand her female anatomy? Do you understand how the, you know, the woman's body works? Do you understand, you know, what interests a woman, what it takes for her to be interested? Were you educated on the process? Really, I do firmly believe that a lot of times education is missing and sometimes just a few books and a few blog articles can make a huge difference in a couple in being able to work on this area. So again, I don't know, you know what her specific reasoning was, what she would say to you, um, in what ways that she would say that she wasn't interested, but for sure, again, recognizing that it was frustrating, there are things that could be done to improve the situation, and it does require effort, and it would require vulnerability from her side and from yours as well. Now, if she absolutely refused to talk to anyone, to read anything, to have anything to do with this topic, then you know you're in that situation where you, maybe you love your wife and your kids but she's not able to fulfill some of your rights as a man and as a husband and it is important because whether it's a wife whose needs aren't being met or whether it's a husband whose needs aren't being met in both cases when you have people whose needs aren't met resentment starts to develop and small issues become big issues because there are these bigger topics that are looming beneath the surface and they're not getting addressed. And so the relationship, you know, just starts to unravel as a result of the fact that both people, you know, they're not feeling satisfied. They're not feeling like the relationship is truly meeting their needs. So if there is an opportunity for you guys to get back together, if that's something that you even want, if that's something that you even desire in any way, it's going to have to come from the educational side, where you're both willing to talk to someone and talk to an expert, read things, you know, explore this area, again, for both of you to be happy, not, not just for your needs, but for her as well, for her to experience this side of marriage that can be very positive for her. If on the other hand, what you're really asking is, how can you cope now that you're a single man, you don't have a wife, maybe you don't have your kids around as much, and you're not eating, you're not enjoying that quiet, you're not enjoying the solitude, then I wanna first let you know that you need some time to sort of process what's happened. 
you need some time in order for you to grieve the loss of your marriage and the loss of your family the way that you knew it before. You definitely need to give yourself some space because this is a really difficult situation that you're in. Divorcing is never an easy decision for anybody. Adjusting to being alone is very, very difficult for many people, and it can be very lonely and very isolating. A lot of people aren't going to understand how you feel. A lot of people aren't going to understand what you're going through. So it is really important that you give yourself some time to grieve, some time to learn from what's happened so that if you decide whether to go back to her again if you're able or to move forward with another person in the future, that you are prepared, that you are more educated, that you do feel that you learned lessons from everything that you guys went through. The next piece in here would be to really make sure that you stay connected to your children, that even if you're not married, you show your ex-wife respect, you show her kindness, you speak well of her, because always your kids, that's gonna be their mom. So be a gentleman and be kind and do your best to always show up and be helpful in any way for whatever she needs to raise you know, your children, because you don't want your children to suffer as a result of your separation. So be a gentleman, be kind. Maybe you're not married anymore, but she still is the mother of your children. Focus, you know, using this time to get closer to your children for the time when you're with them to really be fully present with them, to really enjoy the space that you have with them, to give them your all when you're together so that hopefully even though things are difficult and even though you're alone part of the time, when you are with them, you're completely fulfilled by their presence being with them. Become a more active father, become more engaged with them. If you, if there's a place here to become more educated, you know, being a single dad and parenting, again, lots of articles, lots of videos, lots of resources out there completely for free online. You know, spend some of that time alone preparing yourself for a completely different relationship with your kids, for a completely different life moving forward. So that again, even though there are challenges right now, some of the silver lining is perhaps how you're able to develop as an individual, how you're able to develop as a father, and how you're able to develop in that co-parenting relationship that you will always have with your ex-wife if you guys don't get back together. So I hope this gives you some hope and I hope this gives you some inspiration of some things to focus on for yourself. And if you need anything else or have any other questions or anything else important that you didn't include in your question, please don't hesitate to write back. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum.